everyone this is Ross in today's video I want to do a nice little tomato journey for you guys I want to take you guys on a journey what you see in front of you is a number of different heirloom tomatoes that I'm growing here in the zone 7a Philadelphia outside of Philadelphia area climate and I want to show you guys a taste test I want to do a nice little comparison talk about the different varieties we're growing a really huge number of varieties here in this location this year varieties that I've researched quite well through Amy Goldman's book the heirloom tomato um, also from friends and things that people have told me um, we really have found some special special varieties before I get on to the taste test I want to show you guys my little tomato corner here this is one of two areas that I'm growing tomatoes in the yard and I'm always growing them vertically this is something I really really like to do I think they do exceptionally well here like this they have less disease pressure you can grow more varieties in a smaller space you can get more tomatoes in a smaller space this is 18 varieties of tomatoes 18 tomato plants in 18 square feet so you're getting a square foot per tomato plant we're growing them as single stem plants and you can see I prune off all the suckers and we go up these poles just like people and market gardeners mostly do these in greenhouses we're doing them outside and it really has some incredible benefits I've done a number of videos on why this is so critical I think for my area one being that at the end of our season my tomato plants that are indeterminate just keep going they don't stop uh, I was getting beefsteak tomatoes two weeks before my frost which is a bit unusual for someone in my area because by the time that comes around things have cooled down we have lots of rain lots of humidity and the diseases on these tomatoes really start to take over but because these trees or these plants here these vines are pruned as single stem plants they just keep going they don't stop I don't have to succession plant that's one way that people in my area get tomato plant you know tomatoes now in August versus now versus later in uh, in October so um, you can see it definitely has paid off it definitely works well um, a lot of these vines however this year I think have suffered from a lot of aphid damage and I didn't want to go in here and really blast away the the aphids or even spray something I wanted the ladybugs to come in but I just haven't seen them this year so we did lose a couple plants we did we do have lower production than I would uh, expect you know this vine right here is not doing well and it's a bit of a shame but we are getting tons of tomatoes and in fact I have a lot of tomatoes on the other side of the yard uh, that are planted a bit later from friends from neighbors volunteer seedlings um, you know different things that uh, are gonna come in probably in the next week or two and I want to do another video with you guys because this is only August 1st and I've been getting believe it or not tomatoes since early July however I don't think the quality of our tomatoes are really that great at this portion of the season um, you know comparing tomatoes in in July versus August seems to be a big a big difference so I want to make that known to you guys is that this may not be the best representation of the flavor which is unfortunate but we will do another video and this is certainly going to give me good clues and definitely give you guys good clues into what varieties I think will be worth growing next year um, you know like I said there's a lot more varieties that I don't have on this plate that I will have so when that time comes we'll have them and you guys will get to uh, to hear about it but for now this is what we've got and we have only one hybrid which is actually from the neighbor and this is a variety called uh, bush steak and this is a f1 hybrid um, we also have a variety here that doesn't look too great from that you can see that vine that we showed you guys that wasn't doing well this is from that vine this is called Riccio, I, I believe, from my buddy Joe. And then we also have Pink Brandywine. This is my absolute favorite tomato so far. We also have Black Crim, another beautiful tomato. We have Black Beauty, which is bred by Wild Boar Farms. And I thought it, the whole thing was supposed to be black, but the bottom is not. So very strange. Maybe it's something else. 
Um, I really need to look into that. We also have some cherry tomatoes like black cherry. We have sun gold, which actually is a hybrid, but um, they've been volunteers. I've planted a, a sun gold vine years ago and I just let some of the you know tomatoes fall to the ground and every year they come back and I've had some seedlings come up that performed way better than the actual sun gold which is really quite something I've also had some that perform worse so you know it's it's a nice little trade-off here but I've got I think like three or four volunteers over on that side of the yard and uh, some of them are larger some of them are sweeter some of them split more you know, it's just a nice little trade-off to see, you know, if we can get something that's actually better than Sun Gold, which I honestly believe I have. Um, then we also have another cherry tomato here called Green Doctors. Um, and the last cherry tomato we have is called Blonde Kopschkin. We just lost it, but um, it goes by many names. I think another name for this is Ely. This is the most impressive tomato I have. Uh, so far and I should do a video and I think I will just on this tomato because it is incredible uh, there's a number of characteristics that I could show you guys that just blow my mind it's so different than other tomatoes um, in the way that it grows and performs um, also the tomato itself we're gonna taste it here it's quite uh, quite tasty we also have um, flamme which I thought flamme was supposed to be a red tomato, but here it's it's showing up as orange, and I wonder if this is mislabeled. Um, we also have the orange banana tomato, which are paste tomatoes, and the alpaca. Um, I've had a lot of trouble, believe it or not, with the alpaca. It's really getting lots of blossom end rot, um, and there's plenty of magnesium or calcium, whichever one it is. There's plenty of that in the soil, so. I think certain varieties obviously are just more susceptible to it. And uh, I think alpaca, I probably won't be growing next year again because of really both of the vines are not doing well um, with the blossom end rot. But let's try the cherry tomatoes first because they're easier to eat. And I guess we should start off by saying that with most tomatoes, color usually determines flavor. And it's not just with tomatoes, it's with things like raspberries you know, figs, a lot of that color really determines not only the nutrients, but the, the flavor as well. So tomatoes are no exception. And you may have, you know, this is really the same color for the most part as a black creme. So it should be, you know, more black or purple tomato in that sort of category. And the flavor should be reminiscent of something that's quite smoky. That's how I like to really compare black creme but you can see here's the inside I've had some really nice black cherry tomatoes it's the most vigorous healthy vine I have it's really putting on a show this year and in prior years I haven't had it to really get to grow at all it's really good it's a really good cherry tomato I honestly think a lot of you guys should invest in that tomato. Now let's try um, Sun Gold here. You can see the inside of Sun Gold there. Sun Gold's highly regarded, excuse me, as one of the best cherry tomatoes. And that's why I let it come up every year, because it is so good. And it's got nice acidity. Um, it has a nice balance of acidity and sweetness, really reminiscent of what a cherry tomato I think should be. But your black cherry is not really there. It's not, as, it's not exactly as juicy. It's more along the lines of a, a meatier tomato. It has a great sweetness, a nice flavor. However, there's not much acidity to it this year. I mean, there certainly is some acidity there, but it's not like in your face where, you know, I think a lot of us like to have that combo of sweet and acidic. It's a more mellow acidity. Now, let's try Blonde Kopchkin here. 
And I, I think that Blonde Kopchkin actually s tastes a lot similar to, um, you can see there's a lot of seeds in there. It tastes very similar in my mind to Sun Gold. Yeah, but I actually think it's better. I'm a much bigger fan of this tomato. I mean, not just the way it grows, but legitimately everything about it is so impressive. It's great. Let me compare another sun gold here. They're very close, but personal, for my personal taste, I have to give it to Blonde Kopchkin here. Now, what's weird about this tomato is that it's really a nice little burst of flavor in your mouth. It's kind of like a slip skin grape where you bite into a slip skin, the pulp bursts in your mouth, and then the skin comes loose and it's separate. That's kind of the feeling I get from this tomato. Not exactly like a slip skin, but it adds more, it just has more mouth appeal. You know what I mean? Like it has a better texture, um, not your typical cherry tomato texture. It's just, it's just a little strange and I really like it for that reason. Now here's a uh, Green Doctors and my favorite tomatoes of more recent times have been the green tomatoes. So I really tried to get a number of different green tomatoes. I picked up Green Zebra, which is a big favorite of last year's. If you guys saw last year's tasting, I love that tomato. It's really acidic, but it's, it's not overpoweringly. It's, it's like a really nice acidity that it has. I also picked up another one called Green Giant this year. Um, so we'll get to taste Green Giant at some point, but uh, my Green Zebra just didn't make it this year. It didn't survive the transplant with all the, the aphid damage, you know, them just not adapting that well, it seemed like. But uh, yeah, this is going to be an interesting tomato for sure because it's green, but I have not been picking up the acidity that I normally pick up with other green tomatoes, and that could just be you know, your typical green zebra, but yeah, to me, this one is not really that impressive. Um, it's good, don't get me wrong, but so far out of the four, I think it's actually the worst. Um, where I would definitely put, I think in my mind, I think I put black cherry number one, and then I put blonde kopchkin, the Sun Gold, and then I put uh, Green Doctors. Now let's try Flamé, because this is such a strange, in my mind, this is more like a salad tomato. This doesn't really give me much appeal in terms of other purposes. You know, uh, it's kind of like a big cherry tomato that's juicy, but to me, that doesn't seem that appealing, you know? I mean, it's good, but it's not like, you know, all the people are like raving about Flamé and it does this and it does that. It's like really well balanced, I think Amy Golden was saying, in terms of flavor and it is productive and it, it does well in a lot of climates. That's nothing special, in my opinion. But again, is it blonde, uh, is it uh, Flamé? I don't know. All right, now let's try the, let's, I wanna open up alpaca. You're not really supposed to, uh, these are not really tomatoes for eating fresh and neither is the flamé either, to be honest with you. Um, so I guess that's unfair to judge, but I wanna see what the inside looks like. I wanna compare, cause we are gonna make, make paste this year and that's a pretty paste tomato. There's not a whole lot of juice. Doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of water in here. You know, that's impressive. Well, there's a bit more juice in here than I originally had looked at, or you could tell by looking at it, but um, still not like the juiciest tomato. I think it would make great sauce. It has, it has a pretty decent flavor. And here's the orange banana. Wow, look at this. That's interesting. This one seems to have a much bigger cavity a lot less of that, those juices, that pulp. 
uh, less seeds. And you could very easily come in here with your finger and get all that out of there and then throw in your, um, your tomato to make paste. And Amy Goldman says that in her book that who knew that an orange tomato would make such great paste. Um, but apparently it does. And I, th I don't remember exactly what she said, but I think this is one of her favorite tomatoes for paste or the person who really raves about it said this is their favorite tomato for paste. It's not bad, it's kind of mild. You know, not too sweet, not too acidic, just pretty standard tomato flavor. So, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. I think uh, it's gonna be a nice experiment this year to really deal with the, with the paste tomatoes and make sauce and we'll see how it all works out in the end. All right, now let's try this Black Beauty because this one is honestly um, something I've been wanting to try for a while. You can see how black it is. The bottom is of course red and that's the leading indicator of telling you, okay, is it ripe? Um, ideally, you should have one that's probably fully red or a darker red on the bottom. Same thing with the Green Doctors is that the bottom here goes from a darker green color to a lighter green color, almost yellow. So let's, let's try one of these. Wow, that's beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful tomato. Whoa. There's some really good smokiness in that tomato. Um, something very weird in there, like almost like cheese. <laughs> Does that make any sense? Very strange. Let me take another bite here. I taste a little bit of fennel. I'm not kidding. That's a good tomato. They should rename this the fennel tomato. It kind of tastes like licorice a little bit. That's good. It's like, you know, you got basil. You combine it with, uh, with a tomato and it tastes really good. You could probably do the same thing with fennel. Combine fennel with the tomato here, maybe some fennel seeds. This one's already got the fennel flavor in there. Uh, that's pretty nuts. All right, let's try my buddy Joe's tomato here. See what we're doing, what we're dealing with here. He raves about his tomatoes, so we'll see. We'll see there, Joey. Looks good. All right, let's take a bite of this. It's fermented. Ugh, yuck. Oh man, that's a shame. Yeah, so the top of the tomato here, you can see, has really gotten some marks on it. And I don't know if that's from the rain, but inevitably, I think the rain has sat on the top of that tomato and just caused issues. You know, it depressed in, ruined the skin, it penetrated the skin, and then because of that water or the skin got exposed, the pulp got exposed, I think uh, some outside elements got in there and, and it fermented. Um, there's probably, I mean, very unlikely that there's SWD in here, but uh, oh, that is, oh, that's not good. That's really unfortunate. I was looking forward to that, Joe. Um, here is the, the bush steak, a hybrid. And I think, uh, I don't know if this is bred by Rutgers, but I have a feeling it is, so we'll, don't quote me on that, but I think that's correct. All right, let's see. Now, this tomato is not good. Not good at all. 
and this is a good this is a good comparison because oh man I have such good tomatoes in front of me that it's hard to discern which ones are good and which ones are not but it's very obvious that all the tomatoes I've tasted so far are far superior to this and I don't want to bash hybrids at all but these really mealy tomatoes that they that they breed I don't get it I'm gonna be honest I just do not get it um, maybe it has something to do with just how well it stores and how well it ships and this is a crap tomato this is like to me this tastes a lot like a store-bought tomato it's mealy on the inside it's mushy the skin is really thick and difficult to eat and not pleasurable to eat at all so uh, yeah, for me, uh, there's no way I'm growing that tomato ever again. All right, now we have black crim, and on the bottom here, it's also got some of that fermentation. So uh, hopefully we can cut this out, and I won't have an issue like I did with uh, Joe's tomato. It smells good, so I think we're okay. I'm going to put this aside. I definitely think we're all right here. I won't have to spit this one out. God, Joe's gonna kill me. <laughs> All right, um, that is beautiful, by the way, guys. This is one of the most beautiful tomatoes there is. It's also one of the most highly regarded tomatoes there is in terms of beef steaks. This is on everybody's list. Everybody loves black rim because it's black purple tomato. You know, it's uh, it's got that smoky, amazing, complex flavor to it. Uh, let's try it. It's good. I'm not getting the smokiness or that much of it as I have in the past. Whereas the Black Beauty from Wild Boar Farms actually has that and more, I think. It's got like a smokier flavor, slightly more smoky, but also has like a nice, interesting tomato flavor to me. All right, now I say my the, my favorite for last. This is the pink brandy wine, and undoubtedly this is my favorite tomato. For some reason, this tomato just does it for me every year. It performs it performs well every single year. It just has the total package, in my opinion. You know, I would eat this tomato um, every day if I could. You know, this is, and if I was only going to grow one tomato, this would be it. So let's try it now. Again, it's a pink tomato. And the pink tomatoes I find to be a bit more mild in acidity, more sweet. And they, this one just, for whatever reason, has a really interesting, awesome flavor to it. Yeah. This is my favorite one. And I don't know why. It almost tastes like, uh, I don't want to say chalk, but it has a chalky, a chalkiness to it. Like, um, like you can tell there's a lot of minerals in here or something. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's earthy. I guess that's a better way of saying it. It's an earthy, very savory tomato. And I would actually say that this tomato has a lot of umami in it. The same thing with black crim. I think they both are very savory, satisfying tomatoes. You know, they're not mealy. They're, they're, you know, they're very juicy, but not overly juicy. They're not, you know, dry like this mealy tomato here. You know, I don't know how to exactly describe the texture of tomatoes, to be honest with you, but it's a more pleasant texture. It doesn't, it's not all of the, you know, hard exterior that you'd find on a cherry tomato or a paste tomato. It's nice and soft all the way through, pleasing texture, melts in your mouth. I mean, that's really what it comes down to, right? It melts in your mouth. You take a bite of this, you don't even have to chew it. Whereas this cherry tomato, take a bite of this. 
I got to chew it. I have no other option. You know, I think that's where almost black cherry comes in a little bit. You know, um, let's try it again. Yeah, that's it. So it has like a more... I mean, you do have to chew the skin, but the interior is very, very soft. I guess the same thing you know, you have with uh, Blonkopchkin, but Blonkopchkin's more juicy and pop-in-your-mouth type feel, whereas this tomato is literally like a mini beefsteak. Black cherry is kind of like a mini beefsteak. But there's nothing that comes close to this. There's just, it just doesn't, it doesn't compare. And it's gonna be nice, you know, my whole objective of this was grow up many tomatoes, find the varieties that would do well here, but also have one for each category. I don't wanna grow 18 varieties of tomatoes. It'd be nice, you know, if they all serve a different purpose. But so far out of the cherry tomatoes that I've tasted, and this is multiple years of different varieties, Black Cherry and Blonde Kopchkin are far superior to the rest. And those two will only be, they'll be the only tomatoes of that category that I decide to grow. I also have a third paste tomato that we didn't get on camera just yet because it's, excuse me guys, it's not ripe yet. But we'll see which, you know, in that category is the best one. We'll see which in the, you know, the, uh, the more salad type tomato like Flamme. You know, these are good for grilling, believe it or not. I like to cook these. I don't really like to eat them fresh. Again, they're nice in salads. You know, this is not really the tomato, in my mind, that can even come close to a big beefsteak that's meaty. You know, and then again, which of the meatier beefsteak tomatoes, which of those is the best one? And so far, it is, without a doubt, the pink brandy one. So, I hope you guys enjoyed some of this. I certainly did. It's unfortunate we didn't get Joe's tomato here, uh, but we did learn. We learned a lot here. We really did. I hope you guys did as well. Um, I want to show you guys some standout varieties later in the year if, uh, if I have time, if I really want to talk about these tomatoes. If you guys want to hear more about them, let me know down in the comments below because then I'll do more, variety, more reviews on tomatoes and talk more about tomatoes. So uh, yeah. Thank you guys for watching this one. If you know somebody who wants to grow these different varieties, um, share this video with them. I'm sure they'd be very interested. Someone who's growing many varieties of tomatoes, I think, will just be in love with this. So uh, let me know what you guys think your favorite tomatoes are down in the comments, what you guys think I should grow for every category, right? You got the salads, you got the cherries, you got the, uh, the big beef steaks, and you got the paste tomatoes. You know, let me know. All right, guys, we'll talk to you all soon. Take care. I'll see you for tomorrow's video.